Brussels, the capital of Belgium. Here we have an example that hopefully will teach a few lessons and make the public sector of all of Europe think. I am definitely willing to discourage anyone anywhere from carelessly venturing into a collaboration in which private partners are given so much free reign. The water supply in Brussels was 100% run by the community until 2001. Then a Viola Daughter company, Aquirus, were commissioned the North Brussels wastewater refinery plant as a public-private partnership because of their new technique to dispose of sewage sludge. From here you have a view on uh, that very new and exclusive system, at Arthur system. Through this system, the sewage sludge is being reduced. A ton of sludge turns into a 50 kilo sack of sand. We are naturally very proud to have something so new, beautiful and big. The plant was officially opened on the 11th of March in 2008. Our king attended the opening. Having such a great new station was considered an important matter. They closed the three collectors in front of the plant and routed the wastewater for more than a million citizens straight into the waterways, into the Senna and the waterways downriver. From an ecological point of view, this was an absolute catastrophe. The sewage treatment plant remained out of service for about 10 days, which is disastrous. 10 days! 10 days without wastewater treatment. Of course, technical problems could have occurred on a publicly operated plant. However, we would have never allowed such a drastic stop of the plant the way the private operators did. And that's the main point, that the public was faced with actions that had already taken place through the abrupt shutdown of the plant by the private operators. The operation has always been working. It's the treatment of the mud that did stop working as it should do, and that was then done uh, in containers and then sent it to, to Germany. From what I hear, that's an enormous amount of trucks every month. They had problems with this system for months. Yes, and now they apparently claim they found the solution. But this solution would be very expensive. That's why this whole conflict is now revolving around the question, who is to pay for the improvement of the plant? Aquarius has already requested an additional 40 million. At the moment, what they are doing is they are trying to restart it, so they are making tests. This is why the sand is still a bit wet and very black and stinky. It shouldn't be like that. So it's just on the process. So for the moment, the worst case scenario would be that this whole concept cannot work at all. Autos is absolutely in the experimental stage. They perform tests, but on a really small scale in Toulouse. That's where the formula was tested. This article makes some very, very serious and detailed uh, accusations that, for example, the call to proposals has been changed in the middle so that it would allow an experimental technology such as the Athos process to compete. Another claim they make is that Veolia made a lot of pressures uh, through the French state, through different uh, lobbies they had, through different networks they had, 
uh, that they invited a whole bunch of politicians and high officials of the administration on big yachts in Saint Tropez just before the, the selection. So the man says, "Oh, so how do you find it?" And the other one is, "Oh, it's." It's very nice. This uh, aftertaste of uh, corruption gives it a very, very pure taste. The Regional General Accounting Office of Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur, who checked the accounts of one of Veolia's branch offices, found the following. One overnight with dinner and breakfast in Morgan for a manager of a water branch, 4,140 francs. Participation in a cantonal district election campaign, 10,000 francs. Trips to Malta and Sardinia for a business partner not contracted, 170,000 francs. A stay in St. James Club in Paris for a delegate from Varest, 5,120 francs. Fees for a lawyer from the Alpes Maritimes, for no given reason, 270,000 francs. Two bills from a partner association currently involved in a legal procedure. 1,362,929 francs. Travel expenses and a stay in Cardiff for four persons, two of which for an executive manager of the local authority of Arrest. 32,024 francs. This is stated by the Regional General Accounting Office, so this is what we pay with our water bills. favors, but also payments of significant sums to influential decision makers. The South French Montpellier. I find the management of water in Montpellier disgusting. There have been cases of corruption and of people taking advantage of the situation. The city council granted Veolia, formerly Compagnie Générale des Eaux, an operating leasing agreement in 1989. In 1994, a Congressional Investigation Committee was established, which then sentenced Compagnie Générale des Eaux for corruption and for bribery. The company paid 8 million francs to a department within reign of the Communist Party to force them to vote for the operating lease agreement, which they did. The briber was sentenced, those bribed were not. Despite the conviction of those responsible at the time from Veolia in Montpellier, Jean-Dominique Deschamps, the management of water is still in the hands of the corporation. But also in the universities does Veolia, along with Suez, play a significant part. Suez holds a professorship at the School for Water and Forest Management. Also in University too, soon another professorship will be granted to Veolia. A Veolia professorship with the task to teach and develop research areas, presumably within their field of expertise and competency, water. This is all a blatant sign of how strongly meshed together science and the economical interests of the operators and other financial interests really are. Maybe it's not so clever that Monsieur Bichou, the regional manager of the southern district of Veolia, is at the head of the center of competency. Equally as inept, perhaps, is naming the fusion of the local water science companies Suelia, as if it were a merging of Suez and Veolia. Hence, it is conceivable that these research centers increasingly, if not solely, developed into a utilitarian science, obediently serving the operators. The Aero Valley. The scientific promoters of the competence center and other scientists from Montpellier's second university 
made an assessment in 2005, certifying the rapidly growing metropolis Montpellier with inexhaustible water resources. Philippe Machtel is a high-ranking scientist and mayor of saint gouen le desert the neighboring community. It is really an absurd story. Some scientists wanted fame and jumped on this occasion, claiming we had here two cubic meters of water per second at our disposal. Voila, here we are in front of the main entrance of the source of the saint Fon spring. I'll show you the sound of the water. Here's the stone. There is a tiny noise after a fall of about 10 meters. According to the test pumping, the levels of the spring water has fallen to 50 meters below the river. The lesson from this story, after 10 days, they had to halt the catastrophic pump endeavor because there was no more water. One has to keep in mind that they risked harming the unique biotope of the river Ero. The water has about 13 degrees Celsius, meaning it's really, really cold. The temperature of the river Ero's water, however, can reach 25 to 30 degrees in the summer. A real problem, because the spring water cools the river water on its way down, and this has a biological impact. If you eliminate the cold water spring, the temperature of the river rises and its health declines. And thus, the things were set in motion towards scientific and political absurdity. It has to be developed. There is a lot of money in it. Water is a gold mine. If you meddle in this corrupt system, or give grants, credits, or gifts, then you have to very generously spread your money. Even environmental organizations, even those I really value, such as French Nature Environment, are being generously financed by Violia Propriété, or Actions Against Hunger, the Red Cross, La Solidarité, and others. Even in the Catholic aid organization, Secours Catholique, the one responsible for issues regarding water is a former chief of staff at Violia. On every level, we're up against a complete overlapping of roles. And when politicians lose an election, they get hired by Suez or Violia. They hire people with the power to influence the commissioning of official public assignment contracts or influence those members of Congress who recreate the laws. For example, deciding on alteration requests, ultimately allowing them access to construction assignment contracts, such as the adaptation of the canal system to newer standards, things that are immediately beneficial to them. They are creating supply and demand themselves with the help of government officials and their lobbyists. Brussels, the European Union Parliament, and the attempt to unravel the widely ramified network through which Veolia is affecting the European Union. The lobbying of Veolia environment in Brussels um, in, the, in water, basically you can say 
it is important to have a very, very wide and diversified lobbying network to be efficient. What is important is to have the same kind of message delivered through as many channels as possible. So you can use think tanks to organize, to organize debates, you can use general business lobbies, you can use specialized water lobbies, such as this, those ones, and you can use global bodies, such as the World Water Forum, etc. For example, Veolia is dominating one body which is very closely advising DG Research about what kind of projects, research projects, it should fund in the five coming years. They are uh, the main funders, I think, I think they are the biggest funders of an entity which is called the Water Supply and Sanitation Technology Platform. So this means, basically, Veolia is influencing the Commission on uh, research projects it will apply to afterwards. So, basically, it will get the European Commission funding project it has asked to be funded. But privatization waves in Europe were never brought on by a large public discourse, but always by a sudden court decision made by the European Supreme Court of Justice, with the intention to force entry into one market or other, or a guideline by the European Commission. And that's why I say, be awake is the rule of thumb. The corporations who wish to break into these business areas continue to exist, and they are constantly rattling the gate of entry to these markets. The Speaker for the European Union Commission opened the declaration on the 19th of May 2009. Water is a commodity like everything else. Thereby, the intention of the European Union Commission was affirmed to open up the market for private firms by obligating the public utilities to request proposals. The system today is a true financial dictatorship, and the water is held hostage by this financial dictatorship. Istanbul, Turkey. The biggest lobby event in the world concerning water, the World Water Forum, is held here in 2009. Initiated by the World Water Council, a governing body named by the water corporations Veolia and Suez, the World Bank, and some other supporters. Along with the self proclaimed Global Water Organization, Ministers, highly influential politicians, UN representatives and the big water business come together under the roof of the private corporations. The problem is, will we in 20 years time have enough water for everyone to access? And how do we assure that everyone will have access to water? This is the difficulty discussed throughout this forum. Because being able to get water is the dignity of men and women. They came together in 1997 and they set up these forums every three years. And at first, we all, I think a lot of us thought, well, this would be a good opportunity to really talk about the world crisis. But it became very clear, very fast, that this is a big trade show for the water corporations. And it's a way of giving themselves legitimacy when they say, well, we have the answers to the world's water crisis. And so when they put on a forum like this with thousands and thousands of people, it looks like 
the whole world's here and everybody agrees and that's the optic they want that's what they need that's what they need to look like but it's a lie it's just a big house of cards they elected themselves the lords of water just decided me 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 why don't you i'll be chair you'll be vice chair oh okay i guess that's democratic not not <laughs> This is a large trade fair where participants from all over the world present their most modern technologies. We passed a new law in the field of public-private partnership. Now PPP is also possible in the irrigation branch. With PPP, we want to irrigate 3.5 million hectares. The private investors are building the irrigation system and will operate it. The water will then be sold to the farmers. Public-private partnership. It's a financing model, not you know selling the water. It's just uh, another form of financing the projects. That's privatized by any name. What Suez and Veolia say is, well, we're not doing that anymore. What we're doing now is public-private partnerships, and that is the public keeps control, but we do the delivery, and we're so efficient, and we do such a great job. It's just gobbledygook. It's the same thing. Private delivery on a for-profit basis is exactly the same as if you're running it. The government signs the contract and hands it over to the corporation. That's privatized by any name. If it's walks like a duck and talks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Maud Barlow is a participant at the Alternative Opposition Forum, to which numerous people affected and critics of the privatization of water have traveled from all over the world. Veolia Environment, then uh, trading as Vivendi, obtained a contract uh, to manage water in Nairobi. And then the government of Kenya would guarantee 15% uh, of the revenue from water would go to Veolia. And they would have to increase the cost of water every year by 40%. cost of water became expensive and a lot of people were not able to access water anymore and uh, had their water disconnected. They had also proposed that the city council had to lay off uh, 3,500 workers and to hire 45 new experts, people from France. The cost of hiring this very small group of people from Veolia was going to cost more than the city was paying for 3,500 Kenyans. The government uh, was forced to reverse the contract with Veolia. That means from uh, July 2001, Veolia wasn't uh, operating the water anymore. The problem with reversing the contract, of course, we know is that uh, we don't know how much money the government had to pay to reverse the contract. Uh, but we know that uh, shortly after that, the government had to borrow money from the World Bank. The success of the World Water Forum disturbs those who have run out of things to say. We will continue. We will continue just as we have since years and continue fighting for those who have no access to water. 
Veolia and Suez came to the United States and they said that privatization would be the wave of the future and they aggressively went after large cities. They fire half the staff, that's where the economic efficiency comes from that they claim they have. Prices usually double. Suez immediately demanded an increase of the water price of 700 percent compared to the public utilities. Afterwards, all political fractions, churches, intellectuals and also the army agreed to a people's referendum in order to put into Uruguay's constitution the human right to access water. The referendum was accepted with 64.7%. Suez finally left the country in September 2006. They also had to leave Argentina and after that Bolivia as well. Buenos Aires, Atlanta, Cochabamba, Johannesburg, Stockton and Felton are only the most famous examples of the successful fight for recommunalization. The reclaiming of the management of water back into public hands is turning into a worldwide trend. Italy, for example. Here it seems a national referendum is successful in preventing the privatization of water intended by Berlusconi, head of the government. Or Germany. Having already had experience with privatization, recommunalization is the trend. As, for example, in Stuttgart, here the city council decided, with a large majority, to recommunalize the management of water, run by the Veolia-owned EDF, as the result of a civil referendum. In the capital, Berlin, as well, also through a civil referendum, here, Veolia and RWE had taken over the management through confidential contracts. Have you heard about our civil referendum? You are paying for what the corporations are taking. The most impressive recommunalization wave is, however, in the home country of the corporations Veolia and Suez. Back in Paris, 2010. Voila, now we have a publicly run water administration in Paris, after having entrusted it to Veolia and Suez for 25 years. All of the responsibilities regarding water are back in public hands. This is a historic decision for the water management service. In two-thirds of the cities in France, contracts with the private operators Suez and Veolia are simultaneously running out. This is the chance to return to public administration. Alongside of Paris, many other cities will use this chance. Bordeaux, Toulouse, Montpellier, Brest and Marseille, and now also Lille. We've had enough of the eternal price increases. We've had enough of the corruption dominating the private water market. We've had enough of the lack of transparency in water politics. The return to public administration is now a possibility.
Obsah videa odpovídá na některé základní otázky. Budu velmi rád, když mi sdělíte váš názor na jeho obsah tady dolů pod video a současně, když mi napíšete odpověď na základní otázku. Kdo má dle vašeho názoru mít v rukou českou vodu, vodárenskou infrastrukturu, hospodaření s vodou a peněžní toky a zisky z vody? Zahraniční koncerny nebo městské vodárny? Pokud jste tady poprvé, tak budu rád, když se stanete součástí komunity lidí, kteří se zajímají o dění a situaci s vodou v České republice. Proto jsem pro vás tady připravil možnost stát se odběratelem videí, které jednou za 14 dnů tady dostanete. A současně tady dole pod videem máte možnost si stáhnout analýzu, kterou jsem napsal o vodárenství pro Transparency International. Pověz mi pravdu o vodě a proč ní čas plyne jako voda. Proč ji nechávat náhodě, není to škoda. S vodou tu pravdu polikám, doufám, že nejsem sám.